A while ago, we blogged on how you could integrate API reference documentation into the content created by a help authoring tool so that you could create a documentation portal for all the information that's required if you want a really good set of information for people that are using an API. And over time, we've been asked for more details on the approach that we took, how it can be done. So in this video, what I'm going to do is walk through the steps and the processes, the tools that you can use. With APIs, there's often a big need for API documentation to help developers understand how to use the API so they can integrate the API into their applications. And a lot of people work by creating an API specification in an editor such as Swagger. And the Swagger editor can be used to define the API, the different bits of information that are going to be made available, what you can and can't do with that information, where it's located, and it can also generate from this editor the code that needs to go into the API provider's application to make that information available via an API to end users, to other developers. So it can define the endpoints, the resources, the methods, and so on. And with the Swagger editor, it's also possible to generate from the specification file API reference documentation. So on the screen, you can see the Swagger editor, which the development team would use to define the different bits of information that they want to make available in the API. In this example, it's a pet store, and you get a preview on the right of what the API will be able to do. So what a tool like the Swagger editor can generate is HTML-based documentation generated from the API specification file. So here is the basic HTML format that can be generated from Swagger, and it looks like this. And this is the HTML2 format with a table of contents on the left. And you can also have tabs to see different code samples. And some of the information can be presented in the pretty print style, indented and with color coding. So it's a single HTML file. And this is the dynamic HTML. Again, it has a table of contents on the left. And it has, in addition to that, pop-ups using dynamic HTML. So that's fine. However, often with API documentation, people want more than just the reference documentation. So there's this move towards API portals. So they can include getting started information, tutorials, printed material perhaps, videos, and make it all searchable within one environment. Why they might want to use the API, the benefits, how to get authentication keys. So it's all in one place. And one of the challenges is that there may be a look and feel for all this supplementary information, for example, like this. And if you just import the content generated the reference content generated from Swagger, it has a completely different look and feel. So to the end user, it looks completely different. So ideally, our goal is to have a way of incorporating that reference API documentation into our portal with the same look and feel as the rest of the content into the navigation structure with the top navigation that we have and the search. And just to make life more interesting, more challenging for us, a lot of documentation, reference documentation, has a look and feel that originally began with Stripe API. And that's what we have on the screen here. So it can be with three columns or two columns with the left-hand column or the middle column with black text on white, information on the different endpoints and resources and methods. And then on the right, with on a black background with white text, are a series of code samples. So they can see both the reference information and the code samples on the same screen side by side. And it has its own top navigation. So let's show how we could do this with a help authoring too. 
and I'm going to be using Madcap Flare, although it's possible to use other help authoring tools. So let's create a project called API Test. And we're going to use one of the standard templates and we'll just change it from welcome up to an online help system to an API portal. What we're going to do is create a folder for where we're going to store our API reference content that we're going to import into our project. Okay, so we're going to import an HTML file and we're going to, uh, to select the HTML files that we want to import and we're going to set it so that if that file ever changes before the help system publishes, it will check for any changes in that reference help file and incorporate the new version into the published content. And we're going to import it into our folder, which we've set up called API reference. So we're bringing in that API reference file generated from Swagger into our help project. So it's there with all the other tutorial, getting started, benefits information that we've created. And then what we need to do is incorporate that information into our navigation, to our table of contents within the help system so it appears in the menus. So we're just going to drag and drop that file into our, our list of table of content items, save it, and then just build the project. So we can do generate our portal, generate the web pages for our portal from the project. Okay, so let's look at what it's created. So we've got our portal, little hamburger bar is the navigation at the top because of the size of the screen that we're displaying it. There's our API reference link. Click on that and we've got that um, reference content brought into our portal. We've still got our table of contents and navigation and it's there. It looks pretty basic because of the basic HTML that's been generated with that plain HTML option within Swagger. So there's no color styling. So let's try it with, we try the HTML2 option with the left and right navigation. So to save time, I've gone through the same steps that we've just done to import it into Flare. Just a straightforward import. There's the file in there. We've generated it. Let's look at the output. So again, it comes in but the formatting and the color hasn't come across. It's not recognizing the inline styling and you're not getting the tabbed headings. Reason for that is because in that file generated from Swagger is a bunch of JavaScript and some inline cascading styles. So if you wanted to do that, what you need to do is to modify that JavaScript and either bring that JavaScript into Flare itself as a separate file strip it out from the inline and strip out the inline cascading styles and bring in the relevant styles into Flare. So Swagger can give us a basic import, but there are other ways that we can generate HTML documentation from that API reference YAML or JSON file. So we can look at alternatives to using Swagger. And if we do that, we can get better results than if we were to use the Swagger editor. So what we'll do now is we'll look at some of the other ways of doing that. So what can we use if we don't use the Swagger editor to create the documentation? There are a number of tools out there and most of them are available as packages from the NPM website. So you can go to the NPM website, npmjs.com, and you can search for the relevant packages. So you can search on Swagger, HTML, JSON, YAML, and these are being updated over time. And there's some that haven't been updated for a while. So let's highlight some that you might be interested in using. So one that's worth looking at is called Bootprint and that can convert an API specification file into a static HTML page. So you install npm from a command line, you install bootprint, and then you run it. And if you want that left and right 
Stripe layout, one to look out is called Widdershins. However, if you want that left and right approach, in addition to Widdershins, you might want to look at an application called Slate. Okay, so we've gone into our terminal on a Macintosh and we've installed Bootprint and it's installed the application. And now what we're going to do is use Bootprint to convert that pet store file to be HTML. So that's gone into a folder and we can import that into our Flare project again. And we've put it into the table of contents and we can generate it. So we get a nicer look out. We get our colors this time using Bootprint and a fairly decent layout. But you might notice if you're using the, this template in Flare with a local table of contents navigation, you'll see that that isn't working properly. And also it can cause some issues with the top navigation as well. So if we've looked at different ways of resolving that. In the end, what we decided to do was to modify that file that was created from Bootprint and to remove the JavaScript call. And we created a simplified style sheet that would be imported into Flare so that any clashes and were removed. So each time the reference content need to be generated from Bootprint, what we would do is only import the HTML file and import our own style sheet rather than the one that had been generated by Bootprint. And then do a search and replace to get rid of the call to the JavaScript. So what you can do with Slate is you can set certain settings so that it will generate more plainer text. For example, it can generate just two columns and without the tabs at the top. And there's information on the Slate website, on the Slate website that tells you how to generate it with those elements taken out. And again, what we did was we created an amended style sheet in the same way as we described in the Bootprint. So you'll find some examples of the generated content on the Cherry Leaf website. I hope you found this useful. It is possible to incorporate the reference content into a documentation portal generated from a help authoring tool. It does involve some modification of the cascading style sheets that are generated from these tools and possibly some modification of the JavaScript that it's creating if you want those tabs to be in your output. In that situation, you may well need to get involved, a developer to give you some advice on how to make that JavaScript work in a way that fits with the other JavaScript that's being used by the help authoring tool to generate the tables of contents and to ge generate the navigation at the top. Anyway, I hope you find it useful. If you have taken this approach, be very interested to see how you found it, the outputs that you created. If you want to contact us, if you've got any questions about this, then you can do that through info at cherryleaf.com. And if you need assistance creating content for API documentation portals that benefits information, the getting started information, or that other information that's needed in addition to the reference documentation, then that's actually what Cherry Leaf does. So we'd be delighted to help you do that. Thank you.